Hi everyone, this is Learning with Linda, and today I bring you a Social Security and PBT 3.0 benefit update for the month of April. That's right, you guys, in this video, we'll be discussing the COLA estimated increase in the year 2023 and also the Social Security 2100 Act. We also have a couple of new states that have been approved for the PBT 3.0 benefits, you guys, and as always, we'll be including information in this video regarding which students will be eligible to receive these payments and how much they can potentially receive. So make sure you stay until the end of this video to ensure that you receive this information. Now, before we get started, if you're interested in the latest news regarding stimulus, child tax credit, SNAP, PEBT, and everything in between, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. Now let's get right to it. And don't forget to subscribe to my new YouTube channel called Linda Savings. If you're interested in knowing about the latest sales, discounts, and how to save your money while shopping at some of your favorite stores like Costco, Walmart, Target, Aldi, and many other stores, then this is the channel for you. Don't forget to subscribe. Link to the channel will be in the video description. And as always, thank you guys so much for your support. And also guys, don't forget to take advantage of these offers. Let's start with the Ibotta app where you can get cash back when doing your grocery shopping. You can also receive $10 once you sign up and upload your first receipt using the referral code that is on this screen. And now for those of you that want to maximize your rewards, you can use a second app like Fetch Rewards to upload that same receipt you just uploaded to the Ibotta app. Fetch is actually super easy to use as it will give you points for uploading any type of receipt. You'll even get an additional 2,000 points just for signing up with this referral code. And finally, don't forget that you can shop for your groceries on Amazon with your EBT or your PEBT card. The good news is that this one is completely free. No membership is required. And now for those of you guys that want to try out Amazon Prime to purchase other things, you can try it out completely free for 30 days. Just go ahead and click that link in the video description. And now let's start off this video with Social Security. So it seems like, guys, there's an estimated 7.6% in 2023 regarding the cost of living adjustment. So the 2023 cost of living adjustment for Social Security beneficiaries is on pace for another huge increase. And of course, you guys, this is based on a admittedly very preliminary estimate from the Senior Citizens League. So based on the February CPIW data, the CPI that's used to calculate the Social Security COLA, I'm estimating a 7.6% COLA for 2023. And this is something that the TSCL policy analyst Mary Johnson said. It's still six months before we will get the final announcement in October though. And this estimate will change before then. So the official COLA for 2023 will not be determined by the Social Security Administration, you guys, until October. Now, I understand, you guys, that these COLA increases are not necessarily helping anyone since obviously it affects most of you guys, um, your food stamps benefits. It also affects even your Medicare premiums. So let's look at other things that Congress has in mind. Let's look into the Social Security 2100 Act. This one was introduced by Representative John Larson, which would provide an increase in Social Security benefits for seniors and protects benefits, preventing a 20% cut in the year 2034. So the Social Security 2100 Act will, be, will add a benefit bump for current and new beneficiaries, protection against inflation, which means they improves the annual cost of living adjustment formula to better reflect the cost incurred by the seniors through adopting a CPIE formula. So it also protects low income workers. The new minimum benefit will be set at 25% above the poverty line and would be tied to wage levels to ensure that the minimum benefit does not fall behind. This act also improves benefits for widows and widowers in two income households, and it also ends the five month waiting period to receive disability benefits. And now guys, there have been talks in Congress to reform Social Security benefits, and this is one of those that may have a chance to become law. And now let's move on to the topic of PBT 3.0 benefits for the school year 2021 through 2022. Remember guys that there's an eligibility criteria that each student must meet in order to qualify for these benefits. So school children are eligible for benefits if they would have received free of reduced price meals at their schools through the National School Lunch Program, if not for the closure or reduced attendance or hours of their schools for a period of at least five consecutive days. So guys, don't forget that if your child 
child school is conducting classes normally, meaning face-to-face, -face, it is very likely that they will not be eligible to receive an additional PEBT benefits. Also, students will only receive PBT benefits for absences due to quarantines, other absences due to pandemic-related illness, and then approved virtual learning days for pandemic-related reasons. So if your child was absent from school because, you know, he had a stomach ache or, you know, something related in that sense, then just know, guys, that it must be a pandemic-related absence in order for it to qualify for one of those PBT absences. So don't throw away the PBT cards as it is very possible that the benefits Benefits will be reloaded to that same card if your child qualifies for an additional benefit. And now guys, also keep in mind that the benefit amount will be different for everyone pretty much depending on how many days your child was absent from school regarding um, obviously pandemic related illness, right? So if you live with the contiguous United States, keep in mind that the daily rate total right now is $7.10. Alaska, it's $11.44. And for Hawaii, Guam, Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico, it's $8.28. So keep in mind that if you're absent, uh, that if your child, I'm sorry, was absent for five days and you live within con the contiguous United States, then seven times five, you know, that's $35 that you would receive at a minimum if your child does qualify for those PBT 3.0 benefits. And now guys, here we have information for those states that have been recently approved for the PBT 3.0 benefits. And one of those states is the state of Kentucky. So the Kentucky Department of Community-Based Services and the Kentucky Department of Education will issue PBT benefits through the state Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program EBT card system to households with eligible children. So the state's plan to school children covers the months of September 2021 all the way through May 2022. The state of Kentucky plans to send the PBT payments during these dates. So for the benefit months of September through February 2022 in a single distribution on or around May 25th, and then for the month of March through May in a single distribution on or around June 25th. And then also it would issue benefits on July 25th and August 25th to cover prior months of eligibility not reported by schools to the state. Another state that was recently approved to provide those PBT 3.0 benefits is the state of Massachusetts. So the Massachusetts Department of Transitional Assistance and the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education will issue PBT benefits through the state Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program EBT card system to households with eligible children. So the state's plan for school children covers the months of September all the way through June of the year 2022. In addition, the state of Massachusetts plans to send the PEBT payments during these dates. So for the benefit months of September through March in a single distribution in late May, and then issue benefits for the rest of the school year on a monthly basis. And just as a quick reminder, you guys, in case you missed it in my previous video, Texas was also approved to provide those PBT 3.0 benefits. So the Texas Health and Human Services Commission, Texas Education Agency, and the Texas Department of Agriculture will issue PBT benefits through the state supplemental assistance program EBT card system to households with eligible children. So the state's plan for school children covers the months of August all the way through June 2022. And as Texas estimates that it will issue $573.2 million to approximately 1.44 million children at for school closures and reductions in attendance and hours extending from August 2021 all the way through June 2022. So the state of Texas plans to send PEBT payments during these dates, you guys. So from the months of August to December in a single issuance payments in late April, and then from the months of January to June in another single payment in early August. Next, we have the list of states that have been approved to provide the PBT 3.0 benefits for the school year 2021 through 2022. Also, remember, guys, that although your state may be on this list, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will be receiving those PBT 3.0 benefits. Remember, guys, that there is an eligibility criteria that each student must meet in order to be eligible for these benefits. So one of the states that has been approved is Colorado, Delaware, Florida, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Nebraska, 
Nevada is also on this list, you guys. However, keep in mind that the dates have not been released as of yet. Also, is New Mexico on this list? North Carolina, Ohio, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. And other U.S. territories that have also been approved to provide these PVT 3.0 benefits, it includes Puerto Rico, American Samoa, and Guam. And that is all the updates that we have for today. Remember to turn on your notification button to know when I have uploaded a new video. See you guys next time.